If you've owned a Sony APS-C camera for any length of time, such as the Sony A5100 or A6000, it probably came with the 16 to 50 mm kit lens, which overall is a pretty good lens, but you've probably started to notice some of the limitations that it has, either around zoom range or image quality. So today we're going to be looking at a side-by-side -side of two lenses, which could be your first upgrade from the kit lens. We're going to be looking at two Sony zoom lenses, the 55 to 210 mm and the 18 to 105 mm Before we get started, if you haven't seen any of my videos before, I make lots of tips and tricks videos for Sony E-mount cameras. So if that sounds like your sort of thing, please consider subscribing to the channel and dropping a like on the video. So let's look at the physical differences between these two lenses first. Here you can see the 55 to 210 mm mounted on a Sony A6000 body. And you can see that it is fairly long, especially compared to the body, but it is surprisingly lightweight, so still reasonably portable. Now, if you actually use the zoom capabilities, which is a manual zoom on this lens, which means you physically turn the barrel to zoom in and out, you can see that the lens does get considerably longer, and even longer still if you use the lens hood. The lens's finish is metal and plastic, so it kind of fits with the Sony a6000 and has a similar kind of feel to it, so it won't look too out of place. It is a lens designed for this type of camera. The zoom ring is fairly smooth and the focus ring feels roughly the same. Of course there is the physical feel to the zoom ring because the lens is moving when you turn that. So here now is the 18 to 105 again on a Sony a6000. You can see straight away that it is a much wider lens, meaning that it is carrying quite a lot more weight. Something worth bearing in mind if you're taking this lens out and about with you. But overall, actually, it isn't so big, I don't think. The length of the lens isn't too dissimilar to the 55 to 210. And the big difference here, of course, is that it is an electronic only zoom, which also does not move in and out of the end of the barrel, which I feel like is a really great feature. Essentially, this means the lens is always the same length. Whether you're at the widest focal length of 18 millimeters all the way to the most zoomed in, 105 millimeters. This is useful to know if you're ever going to be using this lens with a gimbal because it means that if you zoom in and out the weight isn't shifting around the body of the camera which would destabilize a gimbal when moving in and out. This makes this a really great video lens in that regard. The 18 to 105 has a mostly metal finish but does feel a bit higher quality compared to the 55 to 210. I don't know if that's just because of the weight or just how it looks. It looks a bit more like a professional lens in my opinion. The zoom and focus rings again are quite smooth. You also have the benefit of an electronic wide telephoto rocker on the side, which means you can zoom in and out without using the zoom ring. If that is your preference, it does mean that you could potentially zoom a little bit more smoothly. You can see another big difference is the size of the glass element and that helps contribute to the extra weight of the 18 to 105. That's the physical differences between the two lenses, but now let's talk about one of the biggest differences between them, which is the price. What makes the 55 to 210 mm so good is that it has a long zoom range, but it is also very cheap. Brand new, you can pick these up right now for about $225, about £210, and of course much, much cheaper on the second-hand market, which means it's a really good entry-level lens for improving beyond the kit lens. The difference with the 18 to 105 mm is that it is a much more expensive lens. Brand new, this is listed at the moment for about $600, about £420. Those prices don't seem to match up to me, so maybe you can get it a bit cheaper in the US. Now, I did buy my version of this lens secondhand, so it is worth keeping an eye out for that, but you are always going to be paying a lot more than you will be paying for the 55-210. to So if you're looking for a new zoom lens for your Sony E-mount APS-C size camera, bear in mind just how much more expensive the 18-105 to is. So looking closer at the specifications of the 55 to 210, you might be thinking, well, it's a cheaper lens and it has a longer zoom range. Surely you would go with this lens. Well, there are a lot of positives to it. I've been using this lens for around two years now and I do still use it a lot. I feel like that long zoom range means that it is really good for stuff like wildlife photography and any type of shooting basically where you're further away from your subject or you just need to be that extra bit zoomed in. Here's a zoom range comparison between the two lenses, so you can see just how much more further in the 55 to 210 gets compared to the 18 to 105. As you can see, it does zoom considerably further. Both of these lenses have OSS image stabilization built in, which means that if you're taking video, especially at those longer zoom ranges, you can help reduce the shake of your images. 
which is worth bearing in mind because if you're looking at any third-party zoom lenses, they might be much cheaper, but they're probably not going to have OSS built in, which means you're going to have shakier video. However, a big downside of the 55 to 210 is that its minimum zoom distance is 55 millimeters. Basically, that means that this lens is just going to be way too zoomed in a lot of the time. You couldn't use it for a video like this, for example. You couldn't use it for filming vlogs or anything like that because you're just going to be way too zoomed in to your own face. So you've really got to know what uses this lens will have for you. If you need something much more versatile, which is wide and can zoom in a lot, you might find that you're leaving the 55 to 210 millimeter in your bag because you're just not being able to use it for enough situations. I know that a lot of people end up selling this lens if they're not interested in stuff like wildlife and sports photography. It just doesn't fit the type of photography that they enjoy. Another downside is the aperture on this lens. It's a pretty slow lens with an aperture range of 4.5 at 55 millimeters, all the way up to 6.3 at the full zoom range of 210 millimeters. Which means that this just isn't a low light performer. I think you could probably understand that from the price range and especially how small the lens is for a zoom. But still worth bearing in mind if you want to take a lot of nighttime photography or videos at night you're going to start needing to bump up that ISO, which is adding more grain to your image, and it might not get the results that you're looking for. I'll leave a link in the description of my full review video on this lens. Now let's talk about the differences to the 18 to 105 mm Of course, there's that big price difference, but crucially, there's a minimum zoom range of 18 mm which means that this is pretty comparable to the 16 mm minimum of the kit lens meaning that you can do videos exactly like this, and I record nearly all of my in-studio videos with the 18-105 lens. Personally, when deciding to get the 18-105mm, how wide the lens can go was a big deciding factor for me. I feel like this makes this a really good all-round lens if you can only go out with one lens, it means it's wide enough for things like wide landscape photography, things like vlogging, but also has a pretty good zoom range for things like wildlife photography, sports photography, or you just need that extra bit of zoom to capture your subject. Of course, it can't zoom in as much as the 210mm, but I feel like it's a good middle ground which covers a lot of use cases. Another plus, or maybe even a minus of this lens, but it explains the higher price point, which is it has a constant aperture of f4, which means that it has exactly the same amount of light letting into the lens at the widest to the longest zoom range. I feel like this is good for making very consistent video because it means that you can zoom all the way in and out and the camera doesn't have to recalibrate the image so that the light stays the same. It should stay the same consistently, but of course f4 is still not a particularly fast aperture, which means that the low light performance isn't outstanding. I think it's pretty good and I feel like it's definitely better than the 55 to 210. It's consistently okay if that makes sense. So if you get used to how it feels at one zoom range, you know that the low light performance is going to be the same at all the zoom ranges. So now let's look at some side by side image comparisons between the two lenses. All these shots were taken at the same time with the same camera, the Sony A5100 with the same settings. So here's a side by side at 105 millimeters. I'd say they look roughly the same, but once you zoom in here to this detail, you can see that the bokeh on the 18 to 105 is much swirlier. So you've got more, more blurred background if that's what you're after. But the detail in the middle is roughly the same, I would say, at this point. Now on this image is a bit more low light performance at 55 millimeters. Again, there's a little bit of noise on both of them. So that's kind of the lower aperture that I was talking about before on both of these lenses. Once you zoom in a bit more, so this is at 100 millimeters, you can see that there's a lot more noise being produced on the 55 to 210 millimeter image. That is that that narrower aperture is now struggling. And if I zoom in on that a little bit more, still at 100 millimeters, you can see there's really is quite a lot more noise on the 55 to 210 millimeter shot. Now here at 85 millimeters, you can see that they're both reasonably sharp, but if I zoom in a little bit more, I think there's a little bit more detail on the 18 to 105. Maybe if I zoomed that in a little bit more, you'd see it more, but there's definitely a bit of the edges that are being lost on the 55 to 210 shot. It just doesn't look quite as clear. Now on this one, again, the colors are really, really similar. But if I zoom in here, you can see that on the edge of the chair, there's a bit of chromatic aberration on the 55 to 210, where there's kind of a bit of blue haloing around the edge, which isn't present on the 18 to 105. Now on this shot, this is detail at 55 millimeters, but zoomed in quite a lot. The detail is a 
pretty much the same but some of the leaves on the edges of the 55 to 210 are definitely not as crisp as the 18 to 105. So I think we can tell from those comparisons that the image quality is definitely better with the 18 to 105 millimeter, as you would expect. I think the sharpness of the images with the 18 to 105 are better, as well as the dynamic range, and I feel like there's less chromatic aberrations with this lens as well. It means if you're looking at one of these two lenses and you want the one with the highest image quality, you definitely go for the 18 to 105 millimeter. The only real downside compared to the 55 to 210 millimeter is that it just doesn't have that longer zoom range, and of course that higher price point. So if I had to recommend just one of these lenses, it would be the 18 to 105 millimeter. But depending on the type of images that you want to achieve, that kind of wildlife or sports photography, the 55 to 210 millimeter may be better suited for you. I still think the image quality is pretty good. I've been using it for a long time, and I think you just need to get used to the type of images and how kind of flat the colors can be. And with a bit of editing, you can get things popping pretty nicely. And I still recommend this lens pretty highly because it is so cheap but it does have some drawbacks with the sharpness and chromatic aberrations on these shots, so isn't quite as professional as the 18 to 105. Now, it is worth bearing in mind that if you already have the 16 to 50 millimeter kit lens, you can cover the whole zoom range of the 18 to 105 by buying the 55 to 210 as a companion to this lens. If you're looking for a pure replacement for the kit lens, then the 18 to 105 is much more suited if you also want that extra bit of zoom range that you don't get from the 50 millimeter maximum zoom of the kit lens. My overall conclusion is 18 to 105. Absolutely love it. My favorite lens at the moment. I use it for nearly everything, but the 55 to 210 millimeter definitely still gets some outings when I need that longer zoom range. Amazon links to these two lenses will be in the description below, as well as my full video reviews for both lenses. If you've enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing to the channel and dropping a like on the video. And if you want to check out any of my photography, you can find it on Instagram at Aaron.Prescott. But that's it from me for now. Until next time, see ya.